guys, I hope you are having a wonderful Thursday. I'm Liz Victoria and today I wanted to give advice on the organizations and clubs I joined in college as a STEM student. By STEM, I mean science, technology, engineering, and math, which of course includes computer science. Last week, my advice video was on how to succeed in online classes, which I recommend you check out if you are in school this year. And I also have a video covering the course schedule I had as a double major in computer science and mathematics. Every Thursday, I upload advice videos, and on Tuesdays, I just started a new series called Tech Touch-Up Tuesdays, where I talk about new technological innovations while I do my makeup. In today's video, I will cover the organizations and clubs I was involved in in college and am still an active member in, so if you're interested, please keep watching. The first organization I want to talk about is NCWIT, which stands for the National Center for Women and Information Technology. This was the organization that introduced me to computer science and women in STEM. I actually joined this group in high school. One of my friends was going through applications. We were going through applications for college and we were trying to apply for a bunch of scholarships. She actually found the NC WIT Aspirations in Computing Award and from there she sent the information to me. I applied and then in high school I was able to receive the High School Aspiration in Computing Award and that introduced me to amazing women, amazing opportunities. NCWIT not only does scholarships for high school students, but they also have collegiate awards. Um, that's a $10,000 award. And they also have educator awards. So I was able to network with a lot of women, a lot of students, a lot of people that were interested in computer science, some of which had lots of technical background and information beyond what I had at my high school and then other people were beginners like me so it was nice to have a network that I didn't have before and NCWIT was the first organization which introduced me to a group of women in computer science and that gave me a lot of confidence going into college. NCWIT was not advertised at my particular college but that doesn't mean that you can't join. All you have to do to join is you go online and you state your major and where you go to school and then from there they will approve you and later on when you're accepted you can join the NCWIT Facebook group and that is a huge advantage because people post pretty much whatever computer science question or career question or high school advice question a huge range of topics are discussed on that Facebook page and that's one of the most useful tools I've had throughout college. Another organization which I was super passionate about in college was a student-run dance group called LT3 which stands for less than three which is if you type it out it looks like a heart and that was probably my biggest escape and most fun type of you know after school activity that I did throughout college. The great thing about this org is that it kind of changed every year depending on the leadership. So there was consistency in practices but there also was variation in what we were able to you know perform, what we were able to learn as dancers and because it was student run each student brought a different kind of choreography because each student has their own different experiences as a dancer. So that was something I really enjoyed and by my senior year I was able to choreograph my own pieces and have them be performed at different events on campus. So that was really rewarding. So I definitely recommend if you can. I know with online schooling certain extracurriculars that are more active may not be possible. For example, a lot of sports may not be able to happen because of the pandemic. However, that doesn't mean that you can't still have some active engagement in a sports community and you can still connect with people in those organizations even if you're not meeting in person. And one of the things that my dance group had was an Instagram page. We used that Instagram page to keep people informed on practices, events, bonding, and even online dance classes. So 
there is definitely some adjustment with the pandemic however there are a lot of dancing opportunities that are remote as well and of course it's not the same as actually learning something in the studio with the choreographer but at least there are some free opportunities to still be active in dance uh, in a safe and remote capacity and also in case you're wondering because it was student run we had a variety of different styles of dance. We had some hip hop, uh, contemporary jazz, you know, we had some animation. People could do that. You know, I can't do that so much, but you may find that at your school, there's a lot of student run organizations or student run clubs that really are, you know, manageable with your time commitments if you have a job or just your demands of classes as well. So the next sort of category of groups and organizations I was involved with had to do with community service. So one, when I started with my college experience, I knew I wanted to help the community in some way, but I didn't know exactly like where to find everything because I had moved to a new state and I didn't know as many people. Thankfully, my school had posted a lot of different opportunities for community service, which I was able to take part in. Anything from beach cleanups to teaching math to students at a high school. So we were really active in different ways in the community, which I really, really liked. The one honor society that I ended up joining was called Mortarboard, and I am still an active member in Mortarboard. The three pillars of Mortarboard are leadership, scholarship, and service. And I found that at the chapter at my university, they were really active in making different events very rewarding for faculty, students, and local communities. They had something called a faculty appreciation dinner where the students in Mortar Ward could nominate someone on campus that had impacted them in a positive way. And we were able to honor that faculty member at a very special dinner. So that was one of the best and most rewarding experiences that I had at my university. And so I would just say, if community service is important for you, definitely look at your school's website and explore different opportunities because you will definitely be able to find it. Another local organization that I was able to be involved with was responsible for helping kids in foster care transition into their homes. So I was really, really lucky to be able to get some certifications done to be cleared and then help these young children transition and feel confident and feel safe in their new environment. So that was one of the most rewarding experiences and organizations I was involved with in college. Now I'm going to talk about two other computer science related clubs, one of which is ACM, which stands for the Association for Computing Machinery. And this is a national org, but there's local chapters at different colleges. And with that, there may be a Facebook page or a uh, Instagram for the ACM chapter at your college. So I would look out for that if you're interested. At my college, this was the Central Computer Science Club. So our computer science club was essentially called ACM. At different colleges, it might be different. You know, there might be a special computer science club that's, you know, just about gaming or just about web development or just about mobile app development. But just keep your eye out because if you're interested and you're a student in the computer science department, you'll definitely hear or be able to find out about different clubs that are computer science related. Now the second one that I want to talk about is really easy to subscribe to. It's called Major League Hacking. So with this, this is where you're going to get all your information on every hackathon you could ever possibly want to join. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard about hackathons, but it's basically like a condensed, usually one to two day intense coding session with a bunch of coders, a bunch of developers, a bunch of students who either they can come in with an idea that they have and they want to just crank it out and make this amazing app in a weekend, or you can come in, which is my approach, with no uh, previous idea in mind and survey the people that are around you and then join a team that you find interesting and you can learn something new, which honestly that was really rewarding. My freshman year of college, I was able to go to Hack at Brown. So I traveled to Brown University and I was able to meet a bunch of people, collaborate on a, a web application. So that was a really rewarding experience 
and I definitely recommend if you're a computer science student to consider going to at least one hackathon if you can. Also keep in mind some of the bigger ones if you apply to you may get rejected. I believe I've gotten rejected to the MIT hackathon and I was on the waitlist for Brown's hackathon. I actually somehow got bumped off the waitlist. Another good thing to think about, Major League Hacking will tell you if there are stipends for traveling. So the reason why I got to go to Brown was because I got funding to fly out there. So keep that in mind. If you think, oh no, like I could never afford that. They do, some, some of these hackathons do have resources available to you. So definitely utilize your resources, explore, search, and you will be able to have very rewarding experiences in the computer science world. And you also set yourself up for success in your career life because you are networking at these hackathons. So definitely keep that in mind. So two other organizations that I'm familiar with but not really involved in are Girls Who Code and Society of Women Engineers. So at my college, Society of Women Engineers was super big, but for some reason I didn't join when I was in underclassmen years, and by the time I was a junior and senior, I already had my plate full, so I didn't dive into that new org, but they do wonderful things, and I know that they're very active at different universities. For example, when I was at my software engineering internship, I was able to talk to one of my colleagues who was also an engineer intern, she told me that she found that job opportunity through a Society of Women Engineers conference. So I would just say definitely check that out if you are interested. So I thought I would put up this next slide to provide some more organizations which may apply to you and you can go explore if you find them interesting. In my case, I don't have a personal experience with them so I can't talk on them but I wanted to show you guys these options in case you do see one that you are interested in and you can go and see if your college has a chapter of them and hopefully if you want to, you can join it and have a rewarding experience with it. And also note that your college may have a engineering or mathematics or computer science fraternity. At my previous college, they did have an engineering fraternity. That was not something I was a part of, but it is something that people in my major were a part of, so that might be an option for you and hopefully if you email your school they can let you know about it or maybe people in your department can tell you if that is something that exists. So now that I've talked about the different organizations I was involved in as a STEM student, if any of these sounded appealing to you, I highly recommend you search them on your school's website or get in touch with your department to see if these clubs exist and are running and from there you can see if they have an Instagram or a Facebook group or maybe they have a newsletter, a weekly email that you can get to stay informed on events or upcoming elections and with that you will be able to network, make new friends, meet people who have the same interests as you or maybe you can find, I don't know what my interests are but I want to explore new things and you'll be able to learn new things from others and also not feel isolated because even though right now we're all you know in our own rooms socially distanced everything is a little bit crazy that's not how it's going to be forever talking about the hackathons again a lot of the hackathons have gone virtual so they may not be as challenging to participate in if you find yourself bored in quarantine i highly suggest you register for a hackathon and try it out. There's no commitment, even if you, especially now that it's virtual, if you don't like it, you don't have to like stay for 48 hours or feel stressed about it. It's supposed to be a fun, rewarding experience. So that concludes my advice on which organizations and clubs you can join as a STEM student. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you return on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I will also be posting a video on Saturday. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Liz underscore Victoria underscore YT, and I will see you very soon.